Let me give you the four so you can have those four in your repertoire so you can meditate. I want you to meditate on these four watch hours of the night. And I'm going to teach you. I'm going to deep dive into each one. So please meditate on these as the Bible says day and what? Here we go. Night. Number one, the first watchman. The first watch of the hour. The first watch is restorative intercession. Restorative intercession. That's six to 9 p.m. That's the first watch. The second watch is protective revelation. That's from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Protective revelation from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Just write them down. I know you said, what does these mean? I got you, I promise. The third watch of the night is from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. and it's territorial authorization. My God. Territorial authorization. I cannot wait to get into that one. Number four, from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., it's merciful elevation. So what do we have? We have restorative intercession. We have protective revelation. We have territorial authorization. And we have merciful elevation. Merciful elevation. Listen, all of these watches are implying something that we should be praying about, but it's also indicating the enemy, for uh, it's also indicating, excuse me, that the enemy has something that he's strate strategically trying to sift out within those hours. If God is waking you up during these hours, I wanna help you out of prayer. He's talking about a state of sin and not just the action of sin. Why? Because with God, when God uh, wants to change and transform, he's not just looking at your actions. He's looking at the state you in. Come on here. He, he's not just looking at what you're doing. He's looking at how you're thinking. Because you may have had a bad day and thought a bad thought, but it don't mean you think, a bad, you think as a bad person. Come on here. Just because I had a bad thought don't mean I'm a bad man. Just because I had a bad thought don't mean I'm a bad woman. I may have slipped in the thought, but I know who I am in my life. Come on here. So you have to make sure that you're dividing, you're dividing actions from state. Are you living in that state or are you just committing that action because you can change the action but if you don't change the state you'll repeat the same action you did because you never got in the same place you was in I hope I'm helping somebody already somebody put in that chat he helping me he helping me encourage the preacher talk back to the preacher in the chat say he helping me come on here so you have to make sure that within these watches watch this that we're praying in accordance to what we expect to change, not just from actionable stand, standpoints, but from uh, a permanent standpoint. Like, I, I don't want to just change uh, my, my, my to-do list, I want to change my habits because my habits impact my character and my character impacts my state of being. It impacts my behavior. It impacts the way my life is orchestrated. So God, don't just change me in, in one area that I only become something of the same in another change the habits so you can so, so that I can change the man God you change the habits and, and I promise you the habits will result in me changing the man or me changing the woman so I want to make sure that we understand these watches and I'm only going to teach four tonight it's eight but I, as you can see I can't get through eight I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know my limitations I listen the Holy Ghost has taught me me I, I'm going to teach four and I want to make sure that we, we, we lay a foundation on these four because to me I believe these four are them are the most important four that we have out of the eight that we're gonna look at because these four occur in the dark who these four occur in the dark, and, and I said this before, but I think it's worth repeating. I need you to understand this and write this down. Don't ever forget this. Engrave this on your heart. Your day always starts in the dark. Say it again. Your day always starts in the dark. And your Bible day does not start in the light. It starts in the dark. It starts at the 6 p.m. hour, not the 6 a.m. hour. Come on here, somebody. The day breaks at 6 a.m., but the day starts at 6 p.m. That means by the time you wake up, you already halfway through your day. You better come on, come on, y'all better. It's gonna make sense to you in a minute why your day goes the way it goes sometimes because the night before you didn't prepare for the day because the night before somebody got on your nerves because the night before you got into an argument because the night before you let the sun go down on your anger and God is saying, I need you to understand that by the time you wake up, half of the day is already gone and if you're not alert, the enemy is. Come on. So wake up everybody, come on, no more sleeping at 6 p.m. Cause that's when your day starts. That's when it begins. And if you, listen to me, if you have to wait for light to get light, 
then the light you have is a dim light. <laughs> Say it again. If you got to wait for light to get light, then the light you have is a dim light. Any light that is a reflection of another light is always dimmer than the source of that light. Always. The moon will always be dimmer than the sun because it's a reflection of light. Come on here. The mirror will always be dim dimmer than uh, before you operate in light, then you subject yourself to that light. What are you saying? If you got to wait to see daylight to get in the morning, then you subject your daylight to your external light. Ah, if, if, if you have to wait, come on, Holy Ghost. Um, if, if you have to wait, uh, if you have to wait for somebody else, watch this, to give you knowledge and revelation, then your light subtracts up under their light. It's a dimmer light. It's a reflective light. It, it, it's a light. It's a light that only shines based off another light. So if I can't pray in the dark because I can't see the light, then whatever it is that watch this causes me to pray becomes my light. Say it again, young man. If I can't pray in the dark because I can't see the light, whatever caused me to see the light, like whatever made me pray, that becomes my light. I gotta learn how to pray when it's dark. I gotta learn how to pray in the midnight hour. I gotta learn how to pray between six and six, baby, with no light outside. Why? Because I gotta tell the enemy I got my own light. <laughs> I gotta tell. I gotta tell. I gotta tell the principalities I walk in my own anointing. I got my own oil. I got my own press. Come on here, somebody. Somebody say I got it myself. And the only light we're supposed to be subjected to is the S O N, not the S U N. It's the it's the King's light. That's the only dimmer light we're supposed to be reflective of. There is nothing else that's supposed to be able to protrude light to you, but the, but the revelation and the presence of God. Everything else you're supposed to shine on it. <laughs> Everything else you're supposed to light it up. Watches, but we understand that the night watches are actually the start of a day, right? 6 p.m. Um, is the start of a day theologically and it should be the start of our day um, mentally and how we how we proactively get in front of the next day or what we call the next day it should be a, a beginning and not an ending we, we approach life um, actually in the inverse way of the kingdom the kingdom is always inverse to the culture say it again the kingdom is always inverse to the culture that mean whatever you see the culture do the kingdom does the opposite whatever you see the culture approve the kingdom approves the opposite the God God is not he's he's not not going against the culture he's set on what his standard is but oftentimes the culture go, goes against the kingdom and this is kind of one of those ways uh, that we think in in terms of culture because we think day means light when the truth of the matter is day does mean light but it just don't mean external light it means internal light and when you have that 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 internal light it does not have to be externally lit for you to know the day has started 6 p.m in your bible starts your day it starts your first watch it's the night watch it starts at 6 p.m then goes to 9 p.m which we talked about and then the second watch is from 9 to 12 and let me give you let me give you those again the, the first watch we we, we uh, understand that most of the things most of the things that the bible talks about that happens in this watch right we we want to put kind of a, a a word or a concept to it so we can remember it most of the things that happen deals with what's called restorative intercession restorative intercession what does that mean that means most of the time when you see something that happens between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. in your Bible it has something to do with restoration and either somebody is interceding on that or God is interceding for us it's, it's a period where re restoration typically happens between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. and you if you think about your life that's when you typically most of people get off work right and we need to be restored mentally we need to be restored in our families we need to be restored in uh, certain things that we lost during the day there or during the, the hours before then I, I'm gonna say day but you know what I'm saying during the, the morning shift um, we, we've been drained we've been poor from because that's when as you can see in, in your Gospels that's when they came and found Jesus he was doing all this teaching and then the Bible says he would go off and relax why because he's restoring himself come on he's going to pray to get back ready for the next day and we got to make sure that we don't do too much today that we don't get ready for the next day 
that we have a period of restoration. So restorative intercession, number two from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, we, we entitled that as proactive, excuse me, protective revelation, protective revelation. What does that mean? That's during the hours where God will reveal to you that he's protecting you. That's where you will see coming into the midnight hour where God will, will, will protect, um, you know, Paul and Silas as they're in jail, where he will protect the children of Israel as they're about to leave out and go uh, into their wilderness and into the promised land where he will protect uh, certain people that's doing things that when Saul was fighting, the Bible says he fought at midnight. Even God gave him that that, that um, revelation that he's protected. That's what you have to understand because that's, if you think about it, if especially if you have family or loved ones and they're out or um, uh, you don't know where they are, it's between those hours where your worry starts to increase. And it's at that point where you have to have a revelation of God protection over your life to say, I can't get to him, but you can. I can't help him, but you can. I can't cover him, but you can. You can you can disseminate your angels into places I can't touch. And that protective revelation and that hour, God may be telling you, listen, while you wide awake, while you worry, and God may be telling you to watch and pray. So I'm, I'm talking uh, and I'm using the subject, stop watching me sleep. And the reason I'm using that, because again, watch sleep, right? Those contradictory, if you're watching, you shouldn't be sleeping. And if you're sleeping, you can't be watching. And we need to understand a little bit more about sleep and as it relates to the Bible. So I want, I want to give you this definition for sleep that God gave me. And, and I've read, you know, some King James version of, of, of the dictionary, which in the King James version of uh, the dictionary, it, it, it says that sleep is, um, sleep is motionless or, and I like this, it says the unemployment of rest for the body. I love that how it uses that word in that context. Motionless or unemployment of rest for the body. That means the body is not employed to do something. I love that very, very, very distinctive uh, definition. Again, sleep is used in different contexts. So you have other encyclopedias and you have other um, um, uh, literature that defines the Bible as an intermediate state uh, between heaven and earth. You know, when, when you talked about sleep as death, as a period or a state that you're in, where you're not neither here nor there, you're in an intermediate state. You have awareness, you have consciousness, but you're not in the place of fulfillment. Sleep is defined as the immobility of bodily functions despite of conscious mobility, meaning my consciousness is mobile but the members of my body are not, my God. Meaning, I can, I'm aware of what's happening, but I'm not doing anything to change it. Oh God. Meaning, I can see what's about to transpire, but I'm limp and I'm crippled and, and my paralysis don't let me solve a problem that I see that's ahead of me. That's sleep. Sleep has nothing to do with your eyes being closed. It has everything to do with your vision being blocked out. Sleep has everything to do with your members not operating in according to your consciousness. Sleep has everything to do when you're not employing your functions and your body to, to do something that's about to make you unemployed or something that's about to bring you uh, some kind of danger or disaster. Sleep has something to do with the fact that you have a conscious awareness Awareness, but you're not doing anything about you about what you're aware of come on here if I have the ability to, to recognize what's about to happen I should have the wherewithal to respond to it before it happens and if I don't respond to it before it happens that means I'm sleeping on what's about to happen hallelujah what a month you've already overcame. I need you to know, you don't have to wait till the battle is over to shout right now. My God. Lord, glory, hallelujah.